Hey, hey, everybody. It's Sunday. I am slowly recovering from my cold. I'm still taking the, the Tylenol pills. Cold and sinus. It's not an advertising. It helps. It helps. Anyhow, so, title of this vlog, Too Much JavaScript. I'm a big fan of JavaScript. I did a whole course on JavaScript, and I've written a lot of apps with JavaScript in the past. What I'm seeing, though, these days is people in their websites are going... In my opinion, they're going a little bit too JavaScript crazy. Now, I got a brand new laptop with um, an i7, and it's super powerful, tons of RAM, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I hit some of these pages, and they're loading so much JavaScript in the pages that the browser is trying to slow down. It's just a real pain. Now, you add on top of this uh, the fact that the browsers, all of them seems these days are quite buggy. A lot of times you find browsers will start eating up memories. I think as in RAM memory, um, I think with Firefox, it has a memory leak. You have to you have to shut down Firefox every now and then because it just starts slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down over time. And it, beca it just becomes like unresponsive. So the browser makers in trying to make web browsers much more sophisticated so that you can have browser-based apps that replace traditional installed applications. Uh, so instead of installing Excel on your computer, you would just use Google Docs or you'd use uh, Google's cloud version of Excel, I suppose. Anyhow, the problem is that in their aims to make in their aim, rather, in their goal to make browsers more powerful, uh, more like thick clients, they've become heavier and buggier, and um, they can uh, cause problems. You know, I've, I have issues every now and then where I have to clear my browser's cache, especially on video-based sites, every now and then, because the videos just start going wonky, it doesn't work. So you clear the cache and everything works fine. So it's uh, it's a known issue with the browsers. You go to Chrome support site, they talk about it and so on. So yeah, when you're developing your website and apps, use JavaScript, but you know, keep in mind that JavaScript can be heavy in terms of amount of memory or amount of CPU it takes to process. And some sites are becoming wickedly difficult to navigate because they're just so heavy with JavaScript. So my suggestion to you is to, uh, like any other technology, don't necessarily run out and go nuts with your JavaScript because uh, you might make your site less responsive. And if you want people to want to use your site and want to use your web app, if it's less responsive and starts tanking all the time, you may uh, start losing uh, some audience, so I would take care of that if I were you. All right, I figured I'd do some uh, mailbag. So uh, this guy, Drew, wrote me. Uh, I bought your book. I thought it would make a good refresher for me, and you can always learn something new. The fact you mentioned no-nonsense jargon is very refreshing. Well, thank you very much. Um, as you know, there are a ton of video tutorials and books out there that are packed full of fluff. I see your videos include some tutorials on Photoshop and WordPress themes. On Photoshop for WordPress themes. Well, we have some Photoshop CS6 uh, video courses in place. I didn't create that one. I'm going to be taking it down because I think that the role of Photoshop has changed uh, drastically in the last several years in web design and development because because the, just the way that we design sites today you don't really uh, need to leverage Photoshop like we had to in the past. You see in the old days when you were designing sites a lot of people rely heavily on Photoshop because you would slice images, do heavy optimizations. It's just the style of that time it meant you needed a sophisticated image editor like Photoshop or uh, Corel Paint or uh, or Draw or whatever. I'll pick pick whatever image editor you want. In the old days of web design, images were used a lot more. Create buttons and menus and all this kind of stuff. But that that's that's now gone. With HTML5, CSS3, you do all your menuing and your buttons in uh, in code, which is ten times better than doing it in images. So what's left? Eh, 
creating some images and so forth, but you, you know, you don't need Photoshop for that. You could use uh, online image editors that Google has them and others uh, that, you know, you just, you know, I'll put a nice image and it looks good. I teach about this in the HTML class, how to do that kind of stuff. So the old Photoshop courses will, and I keep them there because some people still want them, but at the end of the day, modern day web design, the, the need for sophisticated graphic design apps or photo editing apps like Photoshop and so on are highly, highly diminished. So don't worry about that. And he goes on to say, isn't WordPress theme development oversaturated? No, no, not at all. You, you'd think that. And I can see why you would think that because there's so many theme providers and so forth. The thing is, no pre-made theme will do everything for everybody, especially in a business context. So, and most business people wouldn't know how to edit a theme at all. So there's a huge market, I've talked about this in other videos, there's a huge market for WordPress professionals. Those are people who understand WordPress, how to install it, configure it, how to install a theme. Very good if you know how to actually build a theme from scratch, very powerful skill set to have. And of course, you need to know your HTML5, your CSS3, a touch of JavaScript, and a little PHP helps. So no, even though you'd, you think that the WordPress market would be saturated, it's not even close to being satur saturated in terms of being a WordPress professional. Would I get into creating a WordPress theme platform? I'm not sure about that. There's a lot of themes out there, a lot of theme providers, but in terms of you providing WordPress theming skills that you would sell, as a contractor to small business, medium-sized business, there's plenty of work in that, that's for sure. Final question, he says, the other question I had was, does your book cover a lot of what is in your video tutorials? Uh, yes and no. Uh, the book covers it in a different way, but the video tutorials go far more in-depth, far more in-depth. I did write the book to help me structure uh, the basics of my video courses that are now on Studio Web and in to some extent in the interactive web developer. But the book doesn't cover nearly as much as what I get into in the videos. They, uh, they complement for sure because some people like to read and then some people prefer to watch videos. Some people like to do both. I actually learn from both. I do a lot of reading and I do video watching as well. But a lot of people prefer uh, watching exclusive videos. And in the videos, I was not limited by the demands of the, the publisher because when, when I wrote the book, it was published by a good publisher out of the UK and the book is distributed all over the world and on Amazon. And I was limited in terms of what I could talk about. I can only barely mention jQuery, barely mention JavaScript, barely mention PHP. I concentrated on the basic web concepts I concentrate on basic HTML5 and CSS3. Well, a little bit more than that, actually. But nonetheless, yes, if you read the whole book, would you get a lot out of the videos? Oof, definitely, big time. Do, do you need the book to do the videos? Not at all. It's um, you, There's some overlap, but the, the videos just go into far more detail because I'm able to demonstrate all kinds of stuff like animations and so on. And finally, if you submit a comment or a question to me and I don't get to it. Sometimes it's just because I'm really busy. Other times it's because sometimes the commenting and the messaging system in YouTube is not the easiest to navigate. There was like some questions I couldn't approve and I was clicking through and it just, just, just didn't work. All right, that's it for this vlog. I'm still a little bit under the weather, but I'm slowly improving. Bye-bye.